Blockchain represents the second era of the Internet. For decades, we've had the Internet of Information, and now we're seeing the rise of something new, an Internet of Value, where anything of value, from money to stocks to music to art, votes, our identities, carbon credits, intellectual property, can all be transacted and managed and secured. Um, in, in a confidential and, and secure way. And this is as big as the first era of the Internet, and I think it's probably big. And it's very important that every country develop a sensible national policy and a national strategy on this topic. First of all, you need to have businesses using this technology themselves because blockchain will transform every industry, retail, manufacturing, um, uh, healthcare, government, um, science. It will change every aspect of the economy because it provides a new transactional platform for peer-to-peer -peer collaboration and production. And this is very, very powerful. Secondly, Every country needs to create the conditions whereby entrepreneurship can grow and can succeed. And that means good access to capital, good universities that are teaching young people, and we need to have sensible government policies around regulation. There are many things that governments can do. Governments can be a model user of the technology, blockchains, are being implemented in governments around the world. And some governments, like Dubai, have committed to be a fully blockchain government running on a blockchain. Governments can also encourage the private sector to be using this technology. Manufacturing and supply chains will move to blockchains. Foxconn in Shenzhen province is embracing blockchain. Walmart is embracing blockchain for its food safety. And the biggest supply chain ever built, the one road um, project linking Hong Kong to Rotterdam, one belt, one road, all the trade finance and many other function, uh, functions will be built on a blockchain. But most important, governments need to have a regulatory environment that encourages innovation. Now, there's a role for government here, and it's an important one. For the first era of the Internet, my view was always governments should stay out of it, because it was just about information. But when it comes to the second era, blockchain, there's a public interest. We're talking about assets that are important to the public, like money and securities and stocks and intellectual property, and identities, and votes, and so on. So it's important that governments can, on the one hand, take action to protect citizens, but on the other hand, not have a heavy hand that prevents innovation from occurring. And there are many ways that this can unfold. For example, exchanges for cryptocurrencies are a good thing. They're a natural thing, and they should not be banned, they should be encouraged. They can be regulated and watched carefully by governments, but banning them hurts the whole development of this blockchain economy. The same is true for initial coin offerings, or ICOs. Now, the most important thing is to understand that this is a new way of entrepreneurs and even larger companies funding innovation. Now, are there lots of ICOs where the companies will fail? Yes. But in 1995, many dot-coms failed as well. Are there criminals that are participating in fraud with some ICOs? Probably. But we have laws against fraud. We don't need to ban ICOs. We can ban, we can take action to prevent fraud from occurring. And criminals are always the first to use any interesting technology and new technology. Al Capone with the automobile or drug dealers with a cell phone. That's not a reason to ban the technology. It's a reason to have sensible legislation to ensure that the technology works. 
So, to sum up, my view is that, that countries all around the world right now have a, their red flag moment. And what I'm referring to is a hundred years ago in the UK, with the rise of the automobile, governments passed laws regulating the automobile. And the big law was called the red flag law, that if you were going to have a car, you needed to have a driver, a navigator, and someone walking in front of the car with a red flag to prevent the horses from being frightened. And that simple, silly little law prevented the development of an automobile industry in, in England and in the UK. So I, when I talk to government leaders, I tell them, don't create a red flag law. Understand that the second era of the internet is at the heart of the creation of a whole new innovation economy. And I'm so excited and optimistic about Korea because Korea created this miracle, building a massive manufacturing industry. It benefited from outsourcing and it benefited from the first wave of the internet. And it's so important that government leaders and business leaders in Korea do the right thing for this new era of the internet. Don't hurt it, carefully manage it and ensure that its potential can be fulfilled. And the potential is prosperity, it's good government, it's a robust democracy, and it's economic and social stability. That's what's at stake right now. Don't do the wrong thing. So could you go on stage? Uh, does blockchain change the platform ecosystem like Google? Change. Amazon? Change the platform ecosystem. The platform ecosystem. ecosystem. System, like, yeah. like Google, Google Amazon, Amazon, get, Amazon. Get, and so they are getting reduced, get, their power is getting reduced because of the blockchain, because new business is oh, coming up. Sure. Yeah. Well, leaders of old paradigms have great difficulty embracing the new. And right now, the big leaders of the digital age, companies like Facebook, big social media companies, Google, Amazon, even Apple, they benefit from the rich treasure of data that they have. And the way that works is that we, all of us, create this data but they get to keep it. And we can't use this data to plan our lives. We don't get to monetize this data. And in many areas, our privacy is being undermined because the virtual you, this trail of crumbs that you leave as you go through life, the virtual you knows more about you than you do because you can't remember what you bought a year ago or what you said a year ago or what medication you took a year ago or what your test results on an exam were uh, a, a year ago or, or what uh, 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 driver's uh, infraction you made a year ago and so on. So we need to get our identities back and manage them responsibly. And blockchain will enable that to occur because if each of us will have our own identity that we own on a blockchain. So that's going to disrupt the big traditional incumbents like Facebook. Because it means that we're going to own our own data, not Facebook. And they're going to have to develop a whole new model for their business. There'll be a new generation of brokers that negotiate with each of us to give us access uh, to give others access to data and whereby we can even monetize data. So the whole kind of platform ecosystems that we have today from the Internet of Information are about to be disrupted. And that occurs in many areas. You think about something like Airbnb or Uber. Everything that Uber and Airbnb does can be done by smart contracts and autonomous agents running on a blockchain. So the big disruptors are about to be disrupted by this technology.